My name is Jennifer. Hey there. This is where I live. For now. That's Washington, D.C. I've been here for almost six years, and I think I'm going to give it one or two more before I rent a truck and find something that fits me a little bit better. Not that D.C. is bad. I've loved it. I love the coffee and the art and the endless supply of free and cheap ways that I can entertain myself. The 38 languages that you hear just walking down the street. And I really do love D.C.'s history. Not the presidents and the monuments, because... To be honest, all of that got old a long time ago. But the marches and the rallies and the uprisings and the spoken word and the local music and the food, that history, that D.C. Wherever I end up, I wanted to have all of that, but with maybe fewer fancy hoity-toity condos and definitely fewer bars that can get away with charging me $16 for bottom shelf whiskey. But I digress. This is my office. I am a farmer, and not a hip young thing growing kohlrabi on a downtown rooftop. Nope, think more along the lines of your grandpa. <laughs> I read tractor manuals, and I eat dandelion greens, and I grumble when somebody puts mango chutney on a perfectly good cut of meat or puts cream in my coffee. These days... I work at this enormous farm in Maryland, owned by an environmental organization that uses the 300-odd acres as sort of a petri dish, an experimental farm plot to see how much can actually be grown and sold and eaten without hurting the surrounding ecosystem. And in case you're curious, you can grow a lot. <laughs> tons and tons. So, I live in the city, I work in the country, I have a boring name and a stupid voice, and I'm camera shy, and so far, you're probably thinking, maybe this isn't the most exceptional concept for a video series, but hold on. I'm going to cut right to the point of all this. Our food culture is f up. I have a second job. I run this nonprofit organization called the Dirt Society. It's an online education portal that could help people grow and eat and live more sustainably regardless of their income, language, and location. But that means that I stare at numbers and spreadsheets and scrolls of HTML for hours and hours every day. And like other nonprofit founders, I try to pull monies out of a hat and generally try to save the world, but only until about 7 p.m. because at that point, my eyes are tired, and I'm hungry, and I've got more bunnies than monies, let's be real. On days that I'm not trying to end global hunger, and by the way, you don't need to tell me it's a long shot, I get it. I'm here, at the farm. It's hard work, but it's also incredibly rewarding. You can't work at a farm and not play. It's impossible. Honestly, I've never known anybody quite so joyful, youthful, relaxed, and healthy as farmers. And that is most certainly connected to this. Just to being outside. Being around animals. Touching the soil and the rain and the snow. Watching the way insects move. Watching things grow and die and be reborn. And I think a lot of us would like to think that's just how it is. Farmers live the good life. But the suicide rate among farmers is terrifying. Poverty, sometimes enormous and insurmountable debt, is inevitable. Injuries on the job are a given. Fatalities aren't uncommon. If you own a farm, you do work 24-7. And if you work on a farm, you probably make minimum wage. And one of the saddest truths about farming, even as you devote your life to growing food and feeding people, perhaps the most vital job there is, you'll probably feel ignored and you'll probably feel invisible. Everybody loves a good meal, but we do not necessarily love thinking about how good meals come to be made. And I think that's because we have an inkling of an idea. Growing food can be an ugly thing to see, and the truth can be hard to accept.
Living the life of both a wandering urbanite and a sheep cuddler has given me a pretty good panoramic view of our food culture, and I'm determined to home in on what exactly is holding us back and making so many Americans sick and poor. And I'm determined to talk to the people involved at every level, and I'm determined to share whatever I find with you. And so begins our great adventure together. You and me, baby. I've got a little bit of money for gas and trains. I've got a tent, I've got a map and a camera, a good pair of work boots, and I've got this compulsion that absolutely won't go away. I want to travel wherever I need to go, just down the street a little ways, or up mountains, or across the desert, and I want to talk to anyone who has a story to tell and share it with you. Because the only way our food system is going to be any less f***ed up is if we understand how it works, how it could possibly work, what hasn't been working. Consider this a safari across the American food landscape, coast to coast. So, log in, tune in, dig in. Welcome to the dirt. <laughs>